Hi, my name is Karthik Rangappa. In this video, let's understand the put option. In the previous video, we looked at the call option both from a buyer and a seller's perspective. In this video, we will try and understand the put option both from the buyer and the seller's perspective. Now imagine a situation where you can get to sell a stock at a higher price when the same is selling at a much lower price in the market. Would you like it? Of course you would. Think about it. A stock is trading at 45 rupees in the open market, but you have a right to sell it at 50 rupees. Now isn't that a good right to have? To get this right, you need to buy something called as a put option of a stock. Let's try and understand this with an example. As you can see, Reliance is trading roughly at 2,560 rupees per share. I will load a put option on Reliance with a strike price of 2,560. Take a minute to go through the details here. The underlying here is Reliance. The expiry of this particular options contract is in October. That's the last Thursday of the October. The strike price here is 2560. PE stands for put option European in nature. The premium that this particular option is trading at is 77 rupee 10 paisa. Now, if I buy this put option on Reliance, it entitles me to a right to sell Reliance at 2560, even if Reliance is trading at 2400 on the expiry date. Now let me go ahead and buy this particular option to show you how easy it is to buy a put option. To do that, all I have to do here is click on buy. Lot size is 250. The price at which I'm buying here is 72.6. The money required to do this is 18,150. As you can see, I've placed the order for Reliance put option. Now while we wait for the order to get executed, Let's try and understand what are the likely outcomes possible by expiry. As you now very well know, there are only three possible outcomes. One, the stock price of Reliance increases. Two, the stock price of Reliance stays flat. Three, the stock price of Reliance declines. So let's start with the third outcome first. That is a situation where the stock price of Reliance actually declines. Let's just assume that the stock price of Reliance falls to 2,400 by end of October when the expiry happens. What do you think is my profit or loss situation here? Of course, I'll make a profit here. Now, how much profit do I make here? You can identify the profit by simply subtracting the strike price that is 2,560 and the current price of Reliance, which is 2,400. So that's roughly about 160 rupees. Of course, I've also paid a premium of 72 rupee 50 paisa here. So I will have to adjust the premium that I've paid and then arrive at my net profit here. So 160 minus 72.5 is my net profit, which is 87.5. Of course, 87.5 is on a per share basis. Remember, I've bought this in one lot size. Therefore, my profit is 250 into 87.5, which is 21,875. Let's look at the second scenario now. Assume that the stock price of Reliance actually increases to maybe about 2,800 on the expiry day. What do you think I as a put option buyer will do here? Do you think it makes sense for me to exercise my right to sell Reliance at 2,560, when in the open market, I can actually sell it at 2,800. Clearly, it doesn't make any sense. Therefore, I will forfeit my right to sell Reliance at 2,560, which also means that I will let go of the premium that I've paid and walk away from this situation. Now, let's just look at the third situation. That is, the stock price of Reliance stays flat at 2560. Now, obviously, it wouldn't make sense to exercise my right, and therefore, I will forfeit the premium that I've paid and walk away from the situation. 
Hence, as a put option buyer, you would be profitable only if the stock price or the price of the underlying declines from the time you've bought the option. If it stays flat or increases, you will not make money. Now, please remember the profit and loss situations that we are talking about is keeping expiry in perspective. There are more dimensions to this. We will cover that in the subsequent videos. Now, before I conclude this video, I want you to think about the payoff structure of a put option buyer. We generalize this by looking at three specific price point, that is 2,800, 2,400, and 2,560, where the price remains flat. But in reality, upon expiry, the price of Reliance can be anywhere. If you do a similar exercise like we did with the call option, you'll get a payoff that looks something like this. As you can see, the loss here is restricted to the extent of the premium that you've paid, that is 72.5, as long as the price of Reliance stays at 2560 or higher. Moment it starts cracking below 2560, that's when your profit starts to roll. The more the stock price cracks, the higher is your profit potential. This is the put option buyer's payoff. Now, what do you think is the put option seller's payoff? It's very easy. You just need to invert this graph and you'll get the put options seller's payoff. The maximum profit that a put option seller experiences is exactly equal to the maximum loss the put option buyer experiences. In this case, the maximum loss for the buyer is 72.5 and therefore the maximum profit for the put option seller is 72.5. As and when the stock price declines, the put option buyer starts to make money, which is bad news for the put option seller because the put option seller starts to lose money. Now, here's a little exercise for you. You know what the strike price is and you also know what the premium here is. Can you think about what the likely break-even point is for both the buyer and the seller? Give it a thought and please do post your comments on this chapter in Varsity and let me know what the break-even point is. So far in this video series, we've learned what the call option is and the put option is, both from the buyer and the seller's perspective. In the next video, we'll try and summarize everything that we've learned so far and open up other dimensions to options. Key takeaways from this video are, 